Okay, we're asked to solve the following systems of equations. We have x cubed plus y cubed equals 1, and x to the fourth plus y to the fourth is equal to 1. So there's a couple things that we know off the bat. We can find two pretty simple solutions. We could pick x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 1, and we would satisfy both of these equations because we'd end up with 0 plus 1 is equal to 1 in each case. And we could also pick x equal to 1 and y equal to 0. This would give us 1 plus 0 equals 1 in both cases. So we know that 1, 0 is also a solution. So those are two given solutions, but we need to see if there's any other solutions. So uh, let's think about this a little bit. So what we do know is that if we take, say, x to the 4, this is going to have to be a number greater or equal to 0. And this is because whenever we take a number and we square it, we end up being greater than 0. And x to the fourth is just the same thing as x times, or x squared times x squared. So that's a fact that we know. So if we think about our original equation, which is x to the 4 plus y to the 4 is equal to 1, we can do some rearranging. y to the 4 is going to be 1 minus x to the 4. Now, we know that x to the 4 is at least 0, so the biggest that y to the 4 can be is 1. But it's going to have to be less than or equal to 1, because if x is bigger than 0, we're going to start subtracting values there. So, uh, because of this, remember, if we take, say, y squared and y is negative 2 squared, we're going to get 4. We need to go into the negatives as well. So this is going to let us figure out that y has to be between negative 1 and 1. Now this is going to be a useful fact for us, so I'm going to keep it over on the right side. Now we can do the same thing with x here. So let's rearrange this. x to the 4 is going to be equal to 1 minus y to the 4. And if we use the reasoning that we did before, we know y to the 4 is going to be greater than 0, 2, which means that x to the 4 is going to be less than or equal to 1, which means that x is going to have to be between negative 1 and 1. So there's another useful fact there. Let's store that for later. Now, we don't need this work anymore. We've just figured out some tools for what x and y have to be. Now, we have a couple solutions already. So what I want to do is I want to focus in on this fact, the fact that x has to be between negative 1 and 1. And I want to break this up into two different steps. The first step we're going to do is check to see what happens when x is between negative 1 and 0. Are there any solutions in there? So what do we know from this? Well, let's start working with x cubed in this case. So if x is between negative 1 and 0, the biggest value that x cubed can be is going to be something less than 0. So if we take our original equation, x cubed plus y cubed equals 1, and we do some rearranging, we know that y cubed will be 1 minus x cubed. And because x cubed is less than 1, this means that y cubed is going to end up being greater than 1, specifically greater than 1. Now, if we have this information, this is going to imply for us that y is also greater than 1. Now, this is going to be a little bit problematic for us because we just said that y has to be between negative 1 and 1. So because there's a problem here, we know there's not going to be any solution between negative 1 and 0. So the only thing we have to consider now is what about the case where we have x between 0 and 1. Because if we cover this, then we've covered the whole range of solutions uh, that could be there given our x. So if x is between 0 and 1, what does this mean for x cubed? Well, we're squaring something, or we're cubing something that's a decimal. So this is going to force x cubed to be less than 0. Now, if we take our original equation, x cubed plus y cubed is equal to 1, and we do some rearranging, 
y cubed is going to be 1 minus x cubed. So uh, in this case, what is this going to mean? So we're subtracting 1, and we're taking something less than 0. So y is going to end up being between 0 and 1. Now, we also know from earlier that x is going to have to be between 0 and 1 because that was our assumption. So what have we learned in this case? Well, let's make some space for this after our derivation. x and y are both between 0 and 1. So here's a couple more facts that we can take from this now. We know that we're going to have x cubed greater than x4 in this case. Why? Because it's a decimal. And when you multiply a decimal by something, like say 0.2, and you square it, this is going to end up being greater than 0.2 cubed. And we can put this into a calculator for any decimal number between 0 and 1. So we know that x cubed will be greater than x to the 4. We also know that y cubed will be greater than y to the 4, as we've seen this before. So if we add these two together, we know that x cubed plus y cubed has to be greater than x to the 4 plus y to the 4. But this here is impossible. Why is this impossible? Because these are both supposed to be equal to 1. Therefore, if we follow this line of reasoning, we see that there's no solution where x is between 0 and 1. Therefore, we have now covered the whole range of values that x could be if there were other possible solutions. So what we found from this is that these are the only solutions that are available, 0, 1, and 1, 0. So I hope this problem is interesting. You can do this with college algebra. You don't need much else. And it's just a reasoning of breaking up your conditions into parts and checking to see uh, what happens, finding contradictions.